I love the eagle just, just chilling just out casual. there. Right? Just Thanks casual. to the Berlin Eagle cheerleaders. And of course, the mascot. Welcome to week six of the rundown. I'm Ron Burke. And I'm Bethany Miller. The competition across the land of enchantment is heating up on the gridiron. Now, our first game of the night, we head to Rio Rancho to Lightning Rod Stadium. The reigning 6A champs already with two losses on the season, really unheard of, losing to the Bulldogs of Artesia last week. So could Cleveland bounce back? The Storm hosting the Friendship Tigers tonight, who they played last year in a 56 52 win. Tigers the ball to start. Quarterback Hudson Hutchinson back to pass finds Landon Hutchinson. In, dodges the tackle and would be brought down with a first down there. Friendship moving downfield quickly. This time Hutchinson back to pass finds Chase Campbell off that rainbow pass in the end zone as the Tigers get on the board 7 0. Now Campbell would get another touchdown, so Tigers lead 14 0 when Hutchinson steps back to pass and hits. I have a count on the run just like that. Tigers lead the storm 21 0 to end the first quarter. So to start the second quarter, Jordan Hatch and the Cleveland Storm. Offense trying to cook up something on the sideline on fourth and five. Hatchback to pass, looking for a man, but he's intercepted by Louis Birch. And the Tigers dominate the storm on their home turf. Cleveland that? falls in shutout fashion. Who knows when the last wow, time that's happened? Right? Finals 35 nothing. Ouch! Keeping it at 6A into Wilson Stadium we go. The Sandia Matadors taking on the Manzano Monarchs. The Matadors driving the first in the red zone. But the Monarch defense comes up with the big play. Justin Duran with the pick in the end zone. Wow. That's opportunistic. Nice play. The Matadors get the ball back and don't blink. The handoff and Hunter Maldonado is gone. Just like that, Sandia leads 7 zip. So the Monarchs trying to get something cranked up here. James Vaultier finds Robert Lucero for the nice pitch and catch. But this drive would stall. The Matadors, on the other hand, keep things moving. Cruz Rivera drops back. Puts it in the air. That's Grayson Frederick at the other end with a nice grab. What a catch. Defended pretty well there, too. The drive continues. This time, Rivera will keep it and reap it. Into the end zone, he goes for a 14-0 lead. Nice spin moves inside, and the Matadors take down the Monarchs, 35 to nothing. Wow. Another shutout. Well, now to a battle of two top 6A teams. Rio Rancho hosting Farmington. The Scorpions entering tonight 4-1, and one, while the Rams... We're looking to bounce back from that three point loss to Hobbs last week. Some handshakes before this one gets going. Scorpions with the ball to start running the hurry up. Quarterback Riego Trell is intercepted, though, by the Rams. Jacob Lesperance. He moves it downfield with a nice game there. So the Rams take over in great field position, but it's fourth and goal with three yards to go. Quarterback JJ Ariano keeps it, but his knee's down. Ooh, at the that one was so close. Yard line. Uh -huh. Scorpions defense. Keep it scoreless. Farmington with a big play there. And just a few plays later, Scorpions backed into their own end zone. Trail hits Beck Michael, who weaves Ron through this Rams defense. And watch him go. He is off with the Jets. 99 yards See to the house. Mm. Farmington, a huge catch and run touchdown. Scorpions on the board, 7 0. But Rio Rancho, they're going to respond. Ariano back to pass, fires it downfield. That's Anthony Rainier and the Rams will not this game at seven. Rio Rancho dominates in the second half. The Rams go on to win at home 48 28. Well, let's head to Valencia County now to Los Lunas. The Tigers hosting the Valley Vikings as those fans <laughs> pretty hyped up to be there. Some nice seats too. the Tigers putting on a clinic for their home crowd. Four minutes to go in the first half, and Damasio came sheer on the run. He hits Baby and Trujillo. What a catch there. Los Lunas executing immediately after that play, handing it off to Jordan Howard as he runs it in for pay dirt. The Tigers extend their lead to 33 over the Vikings. What a Ouch. score there. Yeah. Ron, they're not done. More? They get the ball back. Kane Shiro sees no option to pass. He's going to run it. Just short of a first down there. The Tigers once again in striking distance, and Los Lunas is now in the red zone. Emmy De La Torre running the football up the middle. See the offensive line. Look, making enough room for that young man. De La Torre helping Los Lunix. They send their already massive lead from 33 to 40 by the end of that half. And the Tigers, they take care of business against Valley. The final, 61-7. Big difference there. Let's go to Berlin, where the Eagles are taking on 2-2 two two Mayfield. The 0-5 Eagles looking for their first one of the season. So it's the first quarter and fourth down for Mayfield. The punter taking the chance and running for the first down. Wow. So they trick it up there. Speeding past Eagles players. Mayfield playing with a sense of urgency here and continuing to run. Julian Cornejo coming right at you for the solid game to put the Trojans in the red zone. He'd be tackled right around the 20-yard line. In your living room. But the Eagles would retain possession. Their running game also making plays. Darren Rodriguez with a handoff. Eagles strike first. Rodriguez helps the Eagles take a 7-0 lead. 
Second quarter, off to the races as the Trojans punch back Xavier Ochoa going head first to tie it for Mayfield. The Trojans defeat the Eagles 22 to 20 in a close one. What a close game there was in Berlin. Well, in Moriarty, we go. The four and one Pintos taking on the Miyamura Patriots here tonight. We start early in the first. The Patriots with the Bell quarterback, Dylan Joints takes the handoff, finds a huge hole on the outside. Now he would eventually get pushed out for a huge gain there, but the Patriots are in the red zone, everybody, and they go no huddle on the very next play this time. Joins, hands it off to running back Brian Harold, who explodes right down the middle of the field. He's not denied. That's a touchdown for your Panthers. They go up 8 nothing. So how would the Pintos respond? Well, let's, see. let's hand it off to Lincoln Page. He outruns the defense all the way to the ends. Look at that sideline following him. <laughs> Pintos are on the board. They're Love down 8-7. But later in the first half, the Patriots are punting. Check this out. Returner Isaiah Quintanana makes the first man miss. Then another one. Watch out. Then another one. He's got the moves. Cuts back with one man to beat. Slips the tackle. Look at him Look at the go. <laughs> <laughs> I love how into it they are. The thrilling touchdown return gives the Pintos the lead, but hey, not so fast, Ron. Not so fast, Lee Corso. What this happened? game will go into double overtime. Oh, wow. Patriots come back, beat the Pintos. What? 40, 38. Wow, what a game. Who knew that was going to happen? Okay, let's check in on the battle uh, between rivals. Artesia defeated Cleveland last week. Ooh. Tonight hosting Lovington, one of its last three. And it's homecoming at Artesia. Ooh. Let's get a breakthrough. I bet that's fun. Thank you very much. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Bulldogs can't wait to create something else to celebrate. On the second play from scrimmage in the game from the Wildcats 24, Nia Strada fires downfield, caught Ooh. in the end zone by Ethan Kahn. Bulldogs up to a quick 8 nothing lead. Middle of the first quarter, Bulldogs again threatening inside the 25. Estrada the pitch. Frankie Galindo dodges defenders and then snakes his way where? To Pater. Wow. Gets it done for 22 yards this time. 15 0 Artesia. And on the ensuing kickoff, it's popped high and short into, into no man's land. It's a free ball. Artesia's coverage team storms in like hungry Bulldogs. Recovering at the Lovington 14, and they go right back to work on offense. They need only one play to score again. Look how Galindo does it this time. Now, now this is this is football. Lower your shoulders, bam, Ooh. like a bulldozer. Get out of my way. Artesia builds a 37-zip lead by halftime and wins 44 nothing to stay unbeaten at 6-0. Those Artesia Bulldogs. Man. Yeah, they're rough. Staying in 5A, go to the Wool Bowl. Homecoming for the undefeated Coyotes against the Clovis Wildcats. There's their breakthrough. And after the Roswell D forces a three and out to start, the offense drives all the way to the two. Whew. They hand to the big guy, Bryce Sanchez. He rams across the goal line. Coyotes lead 7-0 middle of the first quarter. On the ensuing Clovis possession, the Cats go for it on fourth and two from their own 45. But everybody, it's like a jailbreak through the middle. They get to the quarterback, Jet Stone. Turnover on downs. Coyotes go back on offense with good field position, Bethany. And the Coyotes need only two plays to strike again. That's Manny Fuentes firing deep. Look at the diving catch in the end zone. That's Josh Estrada lays out for a 37-yard touchdown. That extends Roswell's lead to 14-0 in the first quarter. Then midway through the second quarter, Fuentes throws from the pocket. It's Jacob Palomino in the back of the end zone. That's a great speed route by the receiver. Roswell scores its first shutout of the season, beating Clovis 49-0. They are now 6-0. Can't wait to watch Roswell oh, and Artesia. Head to head, head, baby. Gotta well, now let's go for some eight man football. Manal Panthers already. They're up 40 to nothing against Pine Hill. Panthers defense still working hard with the big lead. They're not backing down. They get the pressure here. They force the bad throw. That's a safety. Put them up 42 0. Then the ensuing kickoff off the safety. Luke Boatman, shortest guy on the team. But he's going to make you miss and break your ankles while you're at it. Reversing field. He gets a big Look at him. return. Little man playing big. He's just going to go right under your arm. I thought he was done. He's not. <laughs> Finally. Well, on that same drive, keep your eye on this ball. Carlos Cummins can't handle the snap. Throws the ball up for grabs. Defense tips it once, twice, right oh, into wow. Ugnius Jasavisius's hands. For the touchdown, that's UG, baby. Panthers shut out the Warriors, 56 nothing. And we have to give it a shout out to Gary Boatman, the athletic director at Manal School, for help with those pronunciations. Gary Bear, thanks, babe. That was first name and the last name. He <laughs> nailed them both for us.